Cool. And I just wanted to one um, maybe lighter subject. Um, I think you also mentioned that you weren't too sure about this um, this uh, question or uh, idea or concept, but. Uh, considering you know you have studied much more on God than I or anybody else has. Um, I know you don't have the answer potentially, but what do you suppose God came from? I have got no idea. Yeah. Of course, um, the more closer you get to God, you have, you know, you have ideas in terms of concepts, I, I would call them rather than ideas, but I can't validate any of, any of them. And so I feel that it's impossible for me to discuss them at length with anybody um, because they're really... where God. The question of where God came from, I feel in the long run is probably going to be the last question that I get to answer. And if that's the case, given an, an infinite existence, it's going to be some time before I get to know the answer to that question, right? Um, if you think logically about it, um, example, you, you have a car, right? Um, somebody created that car, but does the car know its creator? Like, really know it? From a, does a car experience its creator? The car, if the creator happens to be the driver, can experience some of the creator. But it's like saying, like asking a question about where did God come from is sort of almost saying like the car knowing where, where the person who create, designed the car came from. And, and that's, I feel that's the level of intelligence I have about where God came from. It was next to zero. <laughs> and, uh, and to be honest, I don't know whether I'm ever going to actually answer the question. Um, it has been a question that I've spent a little bit of time um, examining, but I'm more focused on experiencing God's nature and personality than I am on trying to understand everything about God. Because the reason why is I feel it's completely illogical for me to try to attempt to understand everything about God from a non-experiential perspective. Um, and can I say why from a logical perspective God is an infinite being if God created an infinite universe and, and has an infinite amount of love then it would make sense that God is, must be from my concept of God an infinite being now if, if God is an infinite being and I am a finite being it's, it's going to be very very difficult for me without receiving a part of God's nature to understand more about God. Because it's like the finite trying to understand the infinite. Does that make sense? Now, as I receive God's love, I'm receiving a substance that comes from part of God's nature. So as I receive this love, I start to understand some of the principles of the infinite. But to understand the being that created the infinite himself or herself is... is like far beyond my imagination as to what I could understand about that particular thing at the moment. And, and when I'm saying far beyond, I'm talking about like millions and millions of years' time, I might come close to even understanding some of the bits about the question you've asked. Does that make sense? I, the difference between asking the question and feeling God is that after a while the question almost pales into insignificance when it comes to feeling God. So the feelings you can get from God um, and the relationship you have with God takes precedence over anything you could ask about God herself. And it's the relationship with God that tells you everything about God's nature and personality. So I can say I know God, but I don't know certain things about God. And some of the things about God... I feel I will never potentially know, bearing in mind that God's an infinite being, as I currently understand it to be. And, and if that's the case, I've got to firstly focus my attention on what I'm I have the capacity to understand first. Does that make sense? Now, as I receive God's love, 
I have a stronger capacity to understand lots of things. So you'll be amazed as you receive more and more of God's love how rapidly you understand some things in the universe in comparison to the average person. Because as you receive God's love, it opens up your soul and grows your soul in such a way that new pathways, you could think of them almost as new neural pathways in your brain, but they're actually in your soul, get established that enable you to have understandings that you couldn't previously have if you had developed only your intellect. But that all being said, since God's love is infinite, it would make sense that I will never be able to fully receive all of God's love without becoming God myself. And I don't believe that is going to be possible. Now, I don't know whether it's not going to be possible. I just don't believe it at the moment. Does that make sense? So God may have made a way in which all of us eventually can become like God in a true sense. In other words, God may have made a way, and I do believe this is possible potentially, that God has made a way for all of us to eventually become God-like in the sense that we all have souls that are children and we have billions of them and we all create universes of our own that we manage. Does that make sense? I do believe that is possible. But I don't know how much... Even once I've gone through all of that experience, I don't know how much I'll understand about God who created me still. You understand? And I am not certain that anybody will, um, actually. And God certainly doesn't need it. Um, God doesn't need us to understand God. God just desires to share love and other understandings with us but God doesn't need us. You know, God's not needy. He's not, he's not going, I'm going to create a whole system so that everybody understands me in the end. <laughs> so God hasn't created a system for that. What God's created the system for is that you all come to understand yourself in the end. Yeah. And that's the beautiful gift of God's love too. God's love is not selfish. It's not motivated by what God wants. It's motivated by what God wants for us. Right? So this whole concept, this new age concepts that exist nowadays of you know, God split himself into billions of pieces so that all of us could experience God. I don't believe in any of those concepts and I've never believed in any of those concepts. In fact, the more of God's love I receive, the less I accept that such a concept is possible. But I do believe that it is possible that God is going to teach us how to be like God in far more ways than we currently can conceive. So I do believe it's possible that God is going to teach us to actually have children of our own that are souls, not, not, not physical bodies, but souls that we create, that have two halves. God will show us how to create two halves of a soul that's pure and pristine in its nature and create billions of them. I believe that God will do that. I don't know for certain, but that's what I currently believe. Does that make sense? So, so I believe that a lot of things are going to be possible in the future, but, but it's all dependent on five things developed within ourselves. And unless we do that, understanding everything else is impossible. And I know that for certain. Because I, I know that the people who have not developed those particular things and received God's love do not understand anything like what I currently understand or have understood through the last 2,000 years. They have no understanding at all, in fact, many of them. They, they think they do, but they have none. Right? And that, they are people who are very happy. They're still very happy. They're in the sixth dimension, very happy people. But, but they don't understand hardly anything about God's universe. It's only when you receive God's love that you start to understand fully God's universe. Yeah. And that's why it's so important. That's why it's the first thing I teach. And the only thing I really want to teach at this point even. Yeah. So does that answer your question? A bit of a long-winded answer in the end.